Well, hello again, Year 7. We have now finished our topic on population and we're going to be starting a new topic. This new topic is on rivers and coasts. You might have done a little bit of this at primary school, but hopefully we'll be adding to your knowledge and we'll be pushing you a little bit more. So to hear, here is today's big question. How does the water cycle work? And I'm hoping you already know a little bit about it. Hopefully you're going to understand that water moves around our planet and you'll be able to describe and explain the different ways that it moves. And for top levels today, I'm hoping you're going to learn some new terms and actually be able to use them accurately in your work. Let's get started. To get us started, I want you to look at these two pictures and think, why is this water that you drink the same as what dinosaurs drank? maybe 300 million years ago. Have a little think, pause, and I'll explain it in a moment. So the explanation is that water cycling on the planet Earth is a closed system. So that means that there's no water gained or no water lost and throughout history. This means that statistically, it's likely that a molecule of the glass of water you might drink once passed through a dinosaur. It may also be the case that the water you drank passed through Genghis Khan or Julius Caesar. You don't know, but it is a possibility. This picture shows a simplified water cycle. You may have seen one like this before. Have a read through it and try and pay attention and make, make sure you understand it. There's also a video clip which will help you understand at the bottom. Then have a look at the discussion questions on the right. I'll, I'll, if you pause it now, I'll explain them in a moment. Now, first question, where is water stored? So there's a few different places where water is stored. Some of the key places are in the ocean or the sea, in glaciers or uh, snow at the top of mountains, in groundwater, and also in lakes. Next question, how is water transferred from air to land? That's through a process called precipitation. Now, precipitation is a post geography word for anything wet falling from the sky, so it could be rain, hail, sleet, or snow. Next question How is water transferred from land to sea? Now, when the rain or precipitation falls on the ground, it might do two main things. It might go over through via surface water flow, like rivers or surface runoff, or it might infiltrate into the ground and go to, and go to the to the sea by a groundwater flow. Next question, from sea to air. So water gets from the sea to the to atmosphere through a process called evaporation. This is most likely to happen when oceans are warmer. Next question, what is the difference between evaporation and transpiration? Both are water, liquid water turning into water vapor. However, evaporation is just where it might be from a river, it might be from a lake, it might be from the sea. Whereas transpiration is basically evaporation, but from plants and vegetation, and trees, etc. Last question, what is the difference between surface water and groundwater? So surface water is water that sits on top of the surface, you'll be able to see it. Whereas groundwater is usually underneath the ground, so you wouldn't be able to see it. This is the first main task of two in this lesson. What I want you to do is using the picture on the last slide, draw a diagram to show the water cycle. Add key terms and briefly explain what they mean. So those terms are condensation, evaporation, groundwater, precipitation, surface water and transpiration. There's also challenge questions there, A to D. I want you to think about them. There are answers on the next slide for you. So yeah, simply check your answers against these answers that are written down for you here. This is the second and final task for today. You've been looking at the water cycle at a much larger scale. We're now going to look at it at a drainage basin scale. Now a drainage basin is an area of land drained by one river and its tributaries. I want you to be able to label the key parts of a drainage basin. The, the key labels that you need to include are on the right hand side. To help you in doing this, there's a video linked to the bottom. Watch the video before drawing out your, your river basin and then labeling it. 
on the next slide those answers, but don't just skip straight to this. Here are the answers to the second task of labelling the drainage basin. Just check that you've got them right. Any that you've got wrong, just correct them. Then you've completed today. Well done.